Hey guys, welcome to my first ever build log with Inwin's Infinity Case uh, Model 805. Or 805 Infinity. Messed that up. But anyway, um, so I'm going to show you guys how to build inside this thing. Or, well, really just upgrading from that piece of garbage to this amazing mint right here. Um, it's my first ever, or this is my first ever build log. I haven't really showed this off before. Um, actually, the reason why this is such a big mess, I don't have anything in its original packaging, is because I had built the computer inside here, but then I'm like, you know what, I guess strip everything out. I also had to dust everything off because I had just, it was, it was a mess. Anyway, so let's start by, so, they nicely just pull the cables right here. So I'm just gonna cut that. Sweet. Also, safety steps. This is things that you guys need to know. I'm honestly not doing it right, because I didn't buy it, but um, basically, uh, you need to, whenever you're starting to work on a computer, you always need a static-free work area. I'm doing this on wood, so it's fine. Um, and then you also have to have, I don't have it with me, but one of those straps um, that you put on your leg and plug onto a power supply or something, or you can just even plug your power supply into your wall and then touch it over time. But um, I have a fully static free work area, so it's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, so the first thing we're going to need to do is, well, we need to figure all this out, all this cable and stuff, move them over here, untie this, just so I can see what I'm working with. And yes, stick around, this video is going to be definitely lengthy, I'm going to cut out any boring parts, but it's going to be boring if you I'll speed parts up, I'm just sitting there screwing stuff down. So, I don't know if that's in the way, I'm going to put my motherboard there. So first things first is whenever you get a, whenever you're going to start building a computer, you want to make sure that your components are working. So I would advise that you plug everything in, you plug everything in into the motherboard to make sure it's working. That way you know, you know if you need to RMA something or anything like that. Um, but I know that this is working because I've had this computer for a long time and I just, it, it's been working for like two years. So I know I don't need to RMA anything, thankfully. Um, but always do that just to make sure. You, ne you can never be too safe. Alright, so first things first, we need the motherboard. So, this is an ASRock X99 Extreme 6 AC motherboard. So, it's by ASRock. It's um, compatible with my Core i7 Extreme Edition 6th generation processor 6850K. Um, so, this is what I'm going to be using today. Actually, Uh, you want to mount everything first. Do they already leave me some mounting part right here? Hold on. So actually, before you even put your motherboard inside the thing, you gotta remember the I/O shield. Every time I I've built computers even with my brother, I've forgotten the I/O shield. And it's a pain in the butt to have to take everything out and then put another one in. So. In, you would think with Inwin, so Inwin's pretty clever here, so you would think to do it this way, right? Actually, there's this little lip right here, right here, where the IO shield sits on, and then it clips in like this. Um, if I can, if I can get my big, thick hands to do it right, and it clips in like this. Now, I'm not exactly sure why they did this, my only guess is one, they put enough room for this uh, in case you have one of those, um, and I'll post a little image of it, one of those big ROG Extreme 6 Asus boards that have the IO shield already installed and it's big and thick. Uh, and the other reason I could uh, come up with is maybe cable management. Um, very difficult to figure out the cable management part, but it does look neat to me. Um, so the next part is the motherboard. You didn't. Uh, the motherboard and I've already showed you guys where to put the mounting holes and I just gotta put in this very carefully just like that 
Is it perfect? I'm a little bit off, I think. No, I'm good. I'm good. I just gotta push a little bit. Whoosh! Yeah, it's good. It's good. Screwdriver. Got all my screws over here. And actually. It was nice enough to give me some new ones right here. Let me just use my scissors to open them. I just use only my cut. There we go. And I'm gonna use these screws right here. They got a little um it's not a washer, but it, it's got a little bit of thickness here. That way it holds your board a little bit better. And they look nice. So first one's going in right here. We have pushed that one. And we start to the plan to run out of the truth because I think Beautiful. Sweet. Next. Sweet, so there's the motherboard. And then, obviously, so since mine is an AC, uh, which has antennas right here, I'm just gonna nicely pop these out like so, and like so. And then my motherboard gives me these little these little hex screws. And this is actually going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, you can see that. This is going to be a lot of fun. But there we go. So what else is nice about this one? This motherboard's got purity sound too, which alone is pretty good. But I have a pair of Sennheisers, so I do have a sound card. That I will be using and I will show you guys how to install that when I get to it but after I install these I will be getting the CPU next Oops. Just use my giant fingers to do this I'll put the antenna on this last so you guys don't have to just see, see my fingers doing every, uh, a bunch of stuff. Probably want to see my beautiful face more. There we go. And then put these behind the capacitors. There we go. That way that's out of the way. So perfect. So next off is the CPU. So like I mentioned, we're going to be using the Core i7 uh, 6850K. Um, it's unlocked, so you can't overclock it. I'm not going to. I've never overclocked, so I wouldn't be a horrible guy to tell you guys how to overclock it. Uh, but we are water cooling. It's going to be a close loop water cooling. So when you want to start uh, open, uh, putting in the CPU, you want to lift this. You want to lift the first retention arm. You lift the second retention arm. You push this back there. You pop this cover up, and then the socket cover you don't need to touch it'll pop off like magic after you've done it so what you want to do is you want to line up this little golden uh, arrow right here this little golden arrow with this arrow right here pop it in give it a little wiggle 
And then LGA 2011 boards do have little teeth right here, so you will never put it, you'll never put it in wrong, you will know. And then just bring this down. Put that one in. Put this one in. And like magic, voila. Plate comes off. Store it somewhere safe, just in case you do need to RMA your board. Uh, they will not accept the RMA without the lid, or with, I'm sorry, without the shield. So make sure you put it somewhere safe. I always store it inside this little box because I will throw the ice in the box away. There you go. So next we're going to be putting in the Corsair uh, LPX Vengeance DDR4 RAM. This runs at 2666. And then if you have XMP, you can go even faster. You gotta enable XMP in your motherboard BIOS though. And so all you do is you pop this pin up, you put in this slot in first, then you put this in, and boom, just like that. Next one. These are quad channel, or you can use them as dual channel. And then you know you're putting these in right, right because there's a little tooth here, and a little tooth there. For example, if I try to flip it, it won't let me put it in. Just so you're, just so you know, if it's your first time, you know you'll do it right. Next one. See, I did it wrong already. Boom. And here's the last one. Just like so. And that's it. That's your RAM. And then, what should we do next? We should... See, okay, so some people have peripherals. So, for example, I am going to be using the Sound Blaster uh, sound card, which does come with this fancy little thing right here, a little uh, dial that I plug my Sennheisers into. I know it's a mess. I can show you guys later. And to do that... To need this, and I'm gonna put it in this slot over here. What's nice about Inwin's case is that they've got these little removable parts with the little screw, and then you use that screw for your PCIe Express device. So I gotta do just pop it in. Very carefully. And it sits. And then all you want to do is support it and screw the puffer in. There we go, that way it doesn't move around. We are going to be using for the graphics card, we are going to be using a GTX 1070. 8GB uh, card, it's got 3 HDMI's display and a... I'm sorry, 1 HDMI, 3 displays and a DVI-D. And you always want to put your first graphics card in your... Um, main... Excuse me, in your first channel PCIe. Uh, that way it gets a full priority so I'm gonna need to take out these two slots there these two over here I'm gonna need to take these two out that's one and that's two Next I'm going to do the graphics card, I've read, uh, I showed you guys to take these out, and then you pull the pin down, you pull the pin down, line it up, the graphics card is always the best part to go in, boom, it clicks, you grab the screws,
Here we are. That's the first one in. Grab the second one. It's a little tough. But that means your card is not going to break your PCIe Express slot. There we go. That way you can get full 16 uh, bandwidth. 16x bandwidth. So perfect. So in my situation, so I run a dual boot system of Windows 7 and Windows 10. Windows 7 is on the NVMe M.2 underneath the graphics card. Then I got Windows 10 on this one. And I've got Windows 10 on this one. So this, what this is, it's a PCIe to NVMe adapter. And basically what you do is you put the NVMe inside here, you push it in, it's gonna be up like this, you bring it down and then you just screw it in. For my case, I just legit just plug it in. You can plug it into any PCIe slot because all the PCIe's are universal. It's kind of like a USB. You can put a USB 2 into a 3 and vice versa. So actually something I forgot to mention, I'm going to be using Corsair. See, uh, what I'm going to be doing is this whole entire case is going to be with, I'm going to be using Inwin's Hollow um, software to control its lighting and I'm also going to be using um, Corsair's IQ because I've got a whole entire Corsair setup. I'm getting a keyboard, Corsair keyboard, but I got the uh, Corsair mouse and Corsair, Corsair mouse pad, and I've also got Corsair fans. They're not, they're not the IQ variant, these are just green, but to keep things consistent, and this one doesn't light up. And you also want to know which way you're going to have this blowing because obviously the fan, the case needs to get cool air and take out hot air. So this side is exhaust and then if you have it like this, this is take in. Right. So this is, so this is exhaust, this is take in. So let, let's see, we're going to have these two taking in, so this one needs to exhaust. So, I'm gonna put this in like so. Line it up. And I mean, come on. RGB is better than than no RGB. Or well, mine's not RGB, I don't have the newest ones yet, but it's still green, it's lights. Lights are better than no lights. The theme of my build is a green gaming PC. I will show off the RGB glory of the Infinity case, but when I use it, it's gonna be all green. Or Christmas colors, green, red, when Christmas comes around, or orange for Halloween. You can do whatever color you want. There we go. And speaking of fans, why don't we cool this pupper? So for that, I do have something cool by Corsair. Like I said, I'll be using a water cooling loop and it's going to be a closed loop. I'm not going to make my own custom one. I don't know how. I haven't played with it. So first, in order to get this going, to get that going, let me come over here, move all these cables that I'm going to need to figure out what to do with soon. Take off this thumb screw. This thumb screw. Take this plate off. And there we go. 
Um, so I'm gonna be, so I don't have RGB ones, that's okay, I will get them later on when I build my Core i9, uh, computer, but, hey, what are we gonna do, right? So, what we first wanna do, so, um, so, what's, what Corsair gives you, I have to lag over here, Corsair gives you is, first of all, I should probably show you guys, they give you a bunch of these for different kinds of mounting. For example, if you're doing the Ryzen Threadripper, or if you're doing a, um, I remember, I can't even think about it, but like for different P uh, CPUs, I will be using these for mine. These little screws like this. This is for mine. So what it looks like is this short side goes in into here because they've already Azrock's been nice enough to already do the backplate for me there's four included of course there includes these by the way just in case so that like that and like that there we go, I'll show you how that works in a little bit. So for this, it's gonna be, it's gonna be this thing on the back. I just wanna make sure I orient it correctly. This thing on the back. It's gonna be the fans. This is going to look like that. I'm going to use this long screw. I'm going to screw that in. This is awkward to show when you don't have a big enough table or when your table's taken up by so many different things, but there we go. Your radiator is sandwiched in between both the bracket and the fans. That's how we're going to be doing it. That way I get cool air in and then hot air is blown out by the lonely little Corsair over there. Yeah, that's more interesting to look at than just me twisting my hand. I'm putting screws in. Wait, but Alex, what's going to hold the plate? I'll show you guys, it's pretty cool. So after all that's been screwed in, the thing that holds the plate... Tips, but Alex dropped it. You didn't record me saying that, did you? So obviously you don't want to drop this thing. Sorry about that, Inwin. Um, you gotta line this up such that. So if this is going back inside like this, no, I'm sorry, it goes back inside like this. You want this over like so. And then I gotta find. I think it is like that. Yeah. It's like that. Oh, 140 mil. Okay, so yeah, this is the 140 mil. And then they give you screws to go in like that. Screw into here. If it'll go in. Watch me drop this again. There we go. And then you want to repeat that step like a million times. There we go, after screwing in like 16 screws, because that's always fun. That's gonna be fun for cable management, but that's okay. You want to tend to keep all the cables together so it's easier for cable management. 
I am definitely giving myself a challenge here, which is a okay. I promise you, this fits. I just need to find where the teeth are. Drop this in. Where are these teeth? Enough lighting. Boom. And then you put in your thumb screws just like so. One in. Oh, okay, one in, but not screwed. And you want to make sure that's tight in there. That way this thing does not move. Because I'm not dropping it again and it is actually kind of weighty. Not heavy, but definitely weighty. So after you've done that, I think it's about time you've started plugging stuff in into the motherboard, do you say? And actually, okay, so that actually has a header, so that's fine. And bef but before we do, So I showed, I, w I did tell you guys, or I did promise I was going to show you what this is for. So you can choose how to orient your Corsair logo. Probably think of orienting it, what, like this? Yeah, like that, right? What do you think? Or maybe like this? Yeah, I don't like it sideways, like this. That's better? Alright. And then all this does is these four corners go in like so. But before you do that, leave that onto the side like so. I'm gonna be using my thermal take. I'm gonna be using the thermal take diamond pop or thermal grease as they call it. I the name they misses me and oh my god this is hard to pull out. Alright so what you want to do is depending on the size of your processor I'm going to do about, about yay big something like that. Pretty much a rice seed. That's not a lot. It's not a lot. Do this, I want to do this once right. Go. Just like so, pull that down, and then use these kind of screws, like so. Don't tighten it too much just yet, you want to make sure everything is distri distributed evenly. So at least get it down so it doesn't move. Yes, this little Corsair is going to shine like a rainbow. By the way, this Corsair cooler I am using is the H11-5i Pro. Just because I like that not only the name lights up, but the logo as well. It looks beautiful. Also, the surrounding box lights up. It's going to look really cool. So there we go. And then what I'm going to do... is tighten that one a little bit and you want to do it as an X pattern that way it all spreads evenly just like so there you go as for this you can just kind of well we'll figure it out when you do our cable management which is also going to be a pain in the butt Take care of that later, so I'm gonna have that there. Please. So, just get the cables out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Here we are. So now, what you want to do is what's nice about this Corsair 
fan is that it or cooler is that it comes with these two uh, two prongs here that way you can just clip the first one in just like so and clip that's the wrong one and clip the second one in just like so and then we'll find the spot for that probably down here we'll probably hide that down there the next part you're going to want to take a look at is this. This is going to go into the CPU fan 1. That's where I'm going to put it in. CPU fan 1. Actually, I'm going to put it into CPU fan 2. No, 1. Just like that. There we go. And then this is going to go into the power supply. But I don't have the power supply ready yet. And it is SATA power. I did this the first time and it didn't work. I thought I broke something. I just didn't plug the right thing in. This one is going to go into... It's not CPU fan. It is going to be chassis fan. I'm just going to tuck that cable in like that. Actually, I can put it around. So I'll, I'll worry about that later. And when you got a nice fan, but colors. So next on the to-do list is going to be, so I am going to be using a hard drive to store all of my extra stuff on. So all I'm going to do is put this in, just like so. How easy is that? You can't go wrong. Now I'm gonna put in two screws, and I think I've got two screws over here that I can use. Just to hold it better. One. Look around. Now, if you're not gonna be using Let's say you're not going to be using a hard drive, then this cage, and I'll show you in the back when I do flip this case around, there is, and you can probably even see them, there's one, I think two screws, well I know one's right here, I don't know if there's one on the other side, and all you do is you unscrew that, all you want to do is unscrew it, and take this out, but I do have an actual hard drive that I want to use, so I'm going to have it inside there, but that's pretty cool. So boom, done. Alright, um, I'm leaving the hardest part for last, I guess. What else do I got in here? So next is going to be the power supply. Power supply is going to live under here. And I'm going to do fan facing up. So that way it takes everything in and shoots it out. Because, well, that's all metal. So I'm not going to suffocate my fan. Other way? Other way. Right. My camera guy helping me out not make any more mistakes. There we go. And then your power supplies do come with thumb screws. That's how I'm gonna do this. There we go. Hey, this is what, this is what happens when you try to build a computer at like two in the morning. And those are screws here, yeah. There we go. So now, okay. So now we're gonna do. Actually, I'm gonna flip that around, I? Yeah. So let's flip this thing around. Just like so. Get to the other side of this pumper. Make sure I don't crush anything with the legs of this guy. Grab my chair. Alright, so I do have two SSDs. And 
then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put one up here. And how this is going to work is very nice. Put it down or up? What would be the best? Probably down. Yeah, put it down like that. That way when you put it in, you still have access to the ports. Grab your tiny screws. And what you're going to want to do is screw the back of it four times. I am using Samsung's 850 EVO 500GB VNAND flash SSDs. These are... What do are these run at? Like... I didn't fully write a script. I had a script. I didn't fully write a script. Um, I think he's running like five or six hundred megabits a second, maybe faster. Doesn't say what they're rated on here. That's okay. And with the last one, that should make two or three or maybe even one SSDs. So now what you want to do is just like that. I'm gonna put this one down here because that's closest to the power supply and it'll be pretty convenient for me. There we go. Oh, it's upside down. Ah, that's okay. Put that one, that one goes upside down. Oh well, I wasn't fully thinking of the orientation. That's fine. So that way I can just kind of snake these up here and snake them like that. So, so apparently everything's plugged in. Uh, I looked around and I didn't miss anything. Um. No, I did not miss any single thing. So this puffer, I'm gonna pull this out because I might need this actually. You know what? So when we open stuff, so this, what N1 gives you is a, so this is for RGB, so this goes into the USB this goes into the SATA, and then this is for all your RGB lights. So apparently, so they give you two. They give you the one right here, and they give you that strip. So I'm gonna use this for all that. Before I start that, I'm gonna need to start plugging everything in into the computer. So first thing, I'm gonna start with Android sitting down, but back to standing. So first thing is your USB 3 hub. That goes in right here. It goes in right there. I just want to figure out how to manage the cable in very nicely. So it's got a tooth right here. This one's got a tooth. And I'm just making sure. Yeah. Actually, I've got one waiting over here okay so actually I'm noticing this so uh, you can see that there is I don't think there no that is hidden so that means it would go inside this USB 3 now this other one would be oh no so you can plug two USB 3's in here okay so I will take care of that next we got all this fun stuff. I will take care of that later. So now we have USB. And I've got two for this one. So see this flat, um, see this part right here? Focus, focus, focus. There we go. So see this? That goes with that. So you'll know that you're not putting it in right if it doesn't let you put it in. So there we go. And then we got another one. This one is HD audio. It's got one of those covered up ones and HD audio on my motherboard is all the way in the back here. Just gonna get to it. You sh could have been doing this at the beginning of the build. I just tend to leave cabling. Oh, that didn't go in. 
I usually tend to leave cabling for the very last because it takes the most amount of time and effort to do because you want to make sure in a case like this that's glass and that people can see every little speck of it you want to make sure that everything is the way you want it and actually what I can do with this thing is actually what I can do with both of these I'm noticing this now I'm noticing this late so plugged everything in come over here come over here it was a pain in the butt but everything has been plugged in cable management as best as I can get it it still looks terrible but it's as best as I can get it oh that was funny um what we gotta do now so actually I was able to manage to I just had to move one of my pieces and then it it allowed it to go through and close and it's not bending at all. It's for the front. I just gotta get the whole center tape from that VC thing. that like this like this what's that called I want to make sure that use the included cloth to make sure that the case is nice and shiny There's a reason I'm turning this off. It's because... So I hope you guys enjoyed the build log. I know it was a little bit long, but... Hey, the case was really nice to work in. I really want to show you guys um, my kind of system, what I'm using, and to put inside a very nice new case. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Uh, check out the case review as well. I am also planning on uploading other computer parts. I am trying to turn this channel into a tech channel. Gaming didn't work, so and I can see that tech is working much better. I know a little bit more about it, and I actually enjoy working with this stuff. So yeah. So without further ado, enjoy some clan footage and some nice music.